Now let's get back to work and finish making that pattern for the arm bent at the elbow. We'll start with the two pieces of the original pattern. First take the top half, place it on a file folder, and make sure you leave plenty of room for the lower half. Bring the bottom half of the arm into place. Once you determine how much to bend it, position it at that angle, matching up the lines and the circle. If you don't line those up, your arm may be too long or too short. Too long if you match the inside edges, and too short if you match the outside edges. Look at my arm, and you can do this yourself at home. Place your right hand on your left arm, hold on with your thumb, let the skin move under your fingers. Now place your baby finger on the elbow, bend your arm, and see what happens? It moves all the way up to your index finger. That's because the funny bone moves out of the joint and creates the corner that we need here. Now you simply follow this line down, and this line across, and you get the elbow. Now take your pencil and just round it off a little bit. When you stuff that area, it will puff out and look very pointy if you don't compensate now. So that's it. Just finish tracing the arm and the hand, unless you want to change the angle of the wrist, too. You can do that the same way we change the angle at the elbow. By drawing the bone line, making a circle at the wrist, and cutting the pattern in two, right through the circle. This will allow you to change the angle of the hand a little bit, from side to side. Just match up your lines at the circle, and redraw your pattern onto the file folder. Well, that's it for the one-piece pattern. But if your arm bends more than 90 degrees, you'll need to make it in two pieces. In fact, I recommend making it in two pieces anyway. Here's why. Look at my arm. When I bend it, it's narrow from front to back but wide from side to side. Now look at the one-piece arm. It's narrow from side to side and wide from front to back. Now that's not very realistic, is it? So to correct that, you'll really need to make it in two pieces. Another reason to make it in two pieces is so that each piece can be laid out along the straight grain of the fabric. When you make a bent arm in one piece, you have to decide which half goes along with the straight grain. The one that doesn't is going to run the risk of becoming misshapen because of the fact that it is under the influence of the bias all along its length. But if you have to make it in one piece, I'd recommend aligning the lower arm and the fingers with the straight grain. To make the arm in two pieces, you start out the same way, placing the two halves on the folder. Trace around the arm. Then draw the new elbow in. Go ahead and cut out the new pattern. But then you cut the new pattern in half, going from the elbow to the bend in the other side. You'll stuff these pieces separately and then hand sew them together but you have to add some seam allowance at the new cut. Since all my patterns are drawn without seam allowance, it's easy to forget about it when you're laying out the pattern pieces on the fabric. So it helps if you can indicate the extra seam allowance on the pattern. This is how we do that. Place one of the new pattern pieces on the cardboard and trace around the edges. Then position the second piece in place and use that as a guide for the seam allowance on the outside of the elbow. Don't add any to the inside. It would just add too much bulk, since this fabric is going to be gathered in anyway. Make the inside elbow follow the same line as the original pattern piece. Just add about a half inch and draw a line across at the end. And just to make it behave properly, let's curve the line before we cut it out. Keep the dimensions the same by using the corners and the central circle as reference points. Then give a little concave curve to the inside and a little convex curve to the outside, just as if you were drawing a sleeve pattern. 
Then do the same for the other pattern piece. Keep the dimensions the same by using the corners and the central circle as reference points. Then give a little concave curve to the inside and a convex curve to the outside. Now you can put these older pieces aside and use the new piece of cardboard as your final pattern piece. But first, let me show you something. When you cut it out, removing the outline, it's the same size as the original piece. So you see how important it is to cut away the outline each time? If you didn't, this new piece would be much fatter than the original. Now, if you have a very severe angle where the lower arm is brought right up against the upper arm, I suggest using a completely different pattern for the lower arm. Here's what I use. Notice that the angle has changed. Instead of looking at the arm from the side, now we're looking at it from the front. This will change the angle of the hand, turning it toward the body or away from the body. So you need to determine whether or not this will work for your doll. I used this pattern on Josephine Baker, and on Nefertiti. In one instance, the hand is facing toward the body. In the other, the hand is facing away. All you have to do is turn the whole piece over to change the angle of the hand. Just be sure to cut the opening into the side of the arm that will be sewn to the upper arm. If it is toward the body, the cut is made on the palm side. If away from the body, Make the cut on the opposite side. Well, then we have one more thing to consider. For my doll, both arms are sticking straight out to the side. So I have to go back in and alter the shoulder of the arm pattern. I know that the shoulder happens right here. You can put your hand on your shoulder and feel the joint as you raise and lower your arm. So I'll draw the top of the arm Then pivot the arm out and continue drawing the arm to the elbow. Then I'll mark the circle at the elbow and turn the lower arm over so the hand is facing the right way for my doll. Then continue drawing around the arm. That's it for the straight arm. And for the bent arm, I'll use this pattern to make the upper arm, and then use the separate pattern for the lower arm, since this hand is pulled in tight to the body. To review, first we take the original pattern piece, find the joints, and cut it at the joints. Then we position them to the new pose. Then we make new pieces from this pose. That's it for the one-piece pattern. To make a two or more piece pattern, we go on to cut the pattern again, adding seam allowance at the cuts. Well, that's it for the arms. Now you know how to make a bent arm in one piece and how to do it in two pieces.